Hello everyone and welcome back to more sewing with Michelle. This week we are going to dive in to variegated threads and I've got this awesome box set of Aurifil's Kaleidoscope variegated threads to share with you this week. I can't wait and I've got a lot to talk about. I want to explain to you how variegated threads can be beneficial to your sewing and quilting how to look for variegated threads, how to tell if it's the right one for you. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started on this week's More Sewing with Michelle. So let me first talk about the company Aurifil. Now Aurifil is a family owned business. It's been around for a long time. And the company is actually based in Milan, Italy. Um, they, when they create these threads, they only use the finest Egyptian cotton, 100%, from the Maka district in Egypt. Now this area, um, just like any crop that you have, sometimes um, you may grow tomatoes here in Southern California, but someone in the East Coast may have smaller tomatoes. Um, I especially found that when I went to Australia and I went to the produce market with our friends down there and to see the size of the broccoli heads they had and cauliflower, they were almost twice the size of the heads that we have here. So depending upon where you are geographically in the world, the size of the crop or the crop quality varies. So in Egypt, they have the best climate to make cotton and what that means is those cotton strands are extra long and those extra long fibers when you're making thread makes that thread stronger think about it if you had just small things that you're weaving together it's going to break easier but if you have long threads that tension isn't going to cause the breakage so that's why egyptian cotton is so important and so wonderful for threads and our sheets and whatever else we want. We love that Egyptian cotton. So it's very strong. We love that thread because of it. And we all know that we've been sewing on our machines and our machine gets going and every once in a while we'll have the thread snap. Now it could be for lots of different reasons and I'm not going to get into that. But having your thread snap is frustrating because you've got to re-thread and get going again. So any thread that's going to make the process run smoother and faster is always a big plus for me. So I love that about these Aurifil threads. Now, let me go back a little bit. When I first started um, quilting like um, gangbusters when I did, um, I had a group of ladies, my quilting buddies, you all know who you are, but one of them had given me a gift of Aurifil thread, and I thought, why do I need a different thread? And when I used that thread, I went, oh my golly, this thread was wonderful. Now, because of the way that Aurifil thread is made, and with those long Egyptian cotton strands, um, it creates less lint. And the reason it does that is because of the process that Aurifil puts their thread through, which is pretty amazing. Um, and you and I both know, like when I clean out after I've been sewing my machine um, for about eight hours, I always clean out the bobbin and I always change the needle. But that buildup of lint from your thread and also from your batting and your fabrics can cause your machine not to run at its optimum um, desired, you know, thing that we want our machines. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my words. But anyways... That's why you want to make sure if you can get anything that has less lint, it's going to be totally better for your machine and for you. Now, the Aurifil thread goes through 15 steps before it's actually made into thread. And it is mercurized. I Hopefully I said that correctly. And that's what gives it its sheen. Now, it does have, it's not a polyester or rayon thread. It, like I said, it's 100% cotton. But it has a sheen to this thread which is really beautiful. Um, and also it makes it a little bit stronger. Now the thread in this box set here, the kaleidoscope box set that we have, comes with six colors and they're all variegated, which I love. 
and I'm going to talk a little bit about why I use variegated threads in just a little. But we've got this one, which is like dark black to grays. We have a rainbow variegated one, which I love. I use this a lot. We have blues. We have some pinks. We have yellow. And then we have this one, which is kind of, um, as you can see, if you went through it, this one I've used a lot, and I used it on the quilt in back of me. Um, but it's a light gray to white, a little bit of taupe in there. So it's like a neutral thing. And as you can see in the quilt in back, and I'll show a close up a little bit later, I used it to run through all of those scrap fabrics that I have, but also through the white of the heart. Um, and it's just beautiful. I love this thread. And keep in mind, let me show you, I did that quilt in back of me, free motion, edge to edge, um, and it's pretty tightly, um, as far as the design, it's really tight in there. And look, I still have a bunch of that thread left on the spool. Love that too. I love it when you can get um, a spool and you don't have to worry about buying more than one at a time. So these spools, like I said, this one I haven't used in all. They are a large spool, lots of thread on there. And all of these threads are also 40 weight, which I love for quilting and piecing. Now, I said piecing, but I definitely don't piece with my variegated threads. Variegated threads to me are like icing on a cake. You wouldn't use them to make the cake, but you're going to use them to add some pizzazz, some sparks, some sheen, some color, some light um, flecks of stuff throughout your sewing and your quilting. So it's one of those things that are um, part of my finishing. And whenever I finish a quilt, I look at it and I go, okay, first step is how am I going to quilt this? Because I quilt all of my um, quilts at home um, on my domestic machine. But I also think, what threads? And to me, threads are important because I've got a lot of them. I've got a lot of fabrics. I've got a lot of threads. Um, I, I have this thing where I don't want to leave the house if I want to finish a project. So I have stuff on hand at all times. But with that, I, I look at the quilt and I say, okay, what elements do I want to show? Do I want that thread to add dimension to the quilt or do I want it to kind of sink in and have the quilt be the star of the show? Um, or do I want them to have a marriage between the threads and the design of the quilt? There's so many um, ideas there, and there's no right or wrong way. It all is your own interpretation and how you want to accent that quilt. So I don't want you to be scared of variegated threads because I'm going to show you how to use them. Whereas I know a lot of people are like, uh-uh, I don't need in variegated threads. I don't want to even um, attempt to do sewing with it because they're not a they're afraid of how the finished product is going to look. And I hope today, after you watch this, that you'll see it's just a little layer of icing on top of your quilt. And let's get going. And I'm going to show you how to pick a thread and um, how to actually tell what that spool of variegated thread is going to look like on your fabrics. So I want to talk and show you about variegated threads. Now, I have got a ton of variegated threads. I've got all different makes. No big surprise here, but that the Aurafil um, thread that I'm showing you today is not the only company out there with variegated threads. But this one, I'm gonna talk real quickly about one of the reasons why I also love these spools. Now these spools, they have this nice little cap here, which gives them that shape there. So they can go on your machine either direction. I do recommend when you put your spools of thread on to use your thread caps on your machines. Um, it just keeps the spool nicely where it needs to be so that it doesn't unravel at an unusual rate. Now these are spiral wound. You will see the difference here if I hold them up close. This one is wound around the spool where this one, it's wrapped in a different angle. And those definitely mean to have them on in a different thing. I like to have my wrap thread standing up, and I like to have my crisscross wound thread lying flat. That way, when it comes off, it comes off nice and neat. Um, let me see if I can get this, hold it here. 
comes off the spool like so whereas the other one it will actually unwind so that's the difference in threads and you may have noticed that you may have never noticed that that spools are wound differently and for that reason they need to come off of the machine in the right way too but let's go back to the um orophil collided color threads here so it has this cap um it's a large spool now large spool meaning there's a lot of thread on here and it will fit on your domestic machines. They thought of that when they made the size of this spool so that it will fit perfectly on your machine and have your cap. Now, obviously, if you have one of these large ones, like I have this Madeira here, it's not going to fit on your regular sewing machine where your normal um, spools of thread will fit. So I love that we have a large spool of thread that will fit on your domestic machine without having an additional um, place that you have to put your spool of thread. So I love that. Now, the other thing is these caps. And let me just go real quickly about threads. I have often um, bought a spool of thread, a large spool, and then when I got done, I needed more. And sometimes, depending upon the type of um, spool you have, they have the end where they have all the information, and if you put a hole through it, it's gone. Um, and oftentimes you don't know what that spool is, the number, etc. Um, some other ones, they will have it here, but if it goes through, sometimes your numbers can be distorted where you don't know what that particular thread's number is, um, and sometimes even the make is taken away. So I love about Orophil that on their caps here, all the information is there. Um, you're going to get the size, the number, and you can go get another spool to match this really easily just by taking this. Now, another thing that I use these for, and keep in mind, when these come off and I completely use my spool, I save these. Because I am just, I, I want to say that I'm a little bit um, OCD when it comes to certain things. And when I'm done with my spool of thread, I use this and I trap that end of the thread so that it will not unwind and make wherever I store my threads a complete disaster. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a, um, a situation where I go to grab a spool of thread when I'm somewhere else, and it's a complete disaster, and that makes me crazy. So I love that these spools have something to contain the ends. Now, some other threads will have different ways to contain your ends, like this one. This is a wonderful Floriani. Um, but I love that with the Orofil, with these large spools that they have thought of that. Not only is all the information on there, but you can use it to contain your threads. And once that spool's done, like I said, I will save that end and I will use it on other spools. So I love that about it. Now, um, let's go back to the actual thread itself. I'm going to take, as you can see, I've got a big variety of threads here. And I'm going to talk about how to go about knowing when you pick up a spool of thread that's variegated, what exactly does that mean? So if I go here, you'll see that this one here, it's a variegated, it's kind of like a sherbet-y sherbet colors, jungle colors. We've got bright pinks and teals and greens. And the way that I check my variegated spools of thread to see if I like the way they're gonna look is I look down upon those threads. So I'm gonna look straight on and see what that looks like and this mix on the top of the spool is going to be your judge now what you can do also is you can take that out and you can put it on your table and you can see how the variegation goes so this one you can't really tell by looking at it this way but it's got pinks and orange and yellows and greens and teals and lots of colors there's even purple in there so there's lots of colors that you don't see when you look sideways but when you look at the thread on a table you can see where it migrates between the colors and that all depends upon the make of the the thread as far as what colors they want to pop how they want it to transfer from one color group to another color group there's no right or wrong way and i love that there's so many differences now another thing to be careful of is sometimes, let me pull this in a little bit, sometimes you'll notice that the migration from one color to another color, 
may be six inches, it may be three inches. I've seen some that are as short as about an inch and a half. And depending upon what you're sewing, you may want a longer migration. So if you're, say, you're doing a zigzag or an embroidery, if you're filling in like someone's top, you may want that rainbow effect to be longer in between the changes of the thread. So there's lots of things to consider and there's no, like I said, there's no right or wrong way, but they're all different. So I definitely look at the top of my thread to see what it looks like or when I'm purchasing what I might want to look at. And then if I can, I pull out the thread and I look how far in between the colors they change. Now I like something between around four to five to six inches. That's just my personal preference for the type of quilting I do. Now in the back here with this um, Aurifil that I used, it is right there. It's about six inches, five to six inches in between the color changes. And that way you can see the changes in a slow migration. Um, if you wanted the changes to be more fast, you're gonna want those colors on here to migrate faster because as it goes through the machine um, it's going to suck up those colors and change really quick so love that about that now another thing that you may notice like this this variegated thread here is all reds and they migrate so it's a monochromatic variegated thread but also it migrates very slowly in between so it goes from you know the dark red to the light red etc so there's lots of different variegated threads out there. We have um, for embroidery, like I said, we have this Floriani. And let me take up some of these rainbow threads here. So I've got five different spools, all completely different of, I would say, rainbow threads. And if you look at them from the side, they look completely different. But when you pull those threads out, I'm going to show you just how different they can be. So. Let me put this one up and this one here has a very fast migration of colors as you can look here we're looking at about an inch and a half let me get the aura fill out i'm going to pull this thread right in front of it and then we have floriani and keep in mind embroidery floriani thread i use in my quilts so it it's completely up to you um, what you use your thread on um, don't let someone tell you what you can and can't do with your threads and then we've got another Madeira and then we have this one which is um, I think it's King Tut so as you can see looking at these threads here even though the spools are all rainbow, they look completely different. This one's got more of um, bright purples. This one's very soft and subtle. Um, the um, Floriani here has a really nice primary feel to it, so primary colors. So each and every different type of thread by the make, even by sometimes the makes will have the same um, colors, but in a different mix. So you really got to um, look at those spools of thread, check them out, and see exactly what you're going to use for it. And I always say audition your threads on your quilt to make sure that you like them. But variegated threads, like I said, they're going to add a lot. One more thing. I love to use my variegated threads on um, solid surfaces when I'm doing embroidery. So if I'm doing clothing or an animal, um, I love to use, like, think about it, an owl with um, these brown variegated thread would be just gorgeous. This one is also a Floriani variegated with browns. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you wanted to do a shirt, have a rainbow shirt, you know, use one of the, the rainbows and have that solid thing go through, and it's just going to be gorgeous. Um, think about backgrounds. When I do um, a background for a quilt, um, for sky or the ocean, using blue variegated is just going to give that flow through your quilt. Um, also, foliage. Think about grasses, trees, um, dirt, sand, lots of different things that you can use 
one color of a variegated thread on and it's just going to give it's going to give life and texture and like movement to your quilt and that's why i love variegated threads because they're so versatile um you're going to think of lots of different things that you can do with them and they just add just one more element of pizzazz spark to your quilts now let me get a little bit closer and show you some of the close-ups of these threads so I want to show you real quickly some of the things that I have used variegated threads on. And I'm not afraid. I use it all the time. On this one, I just made this bag. And look, I did kind of like a crazy quilt. And look at that wonderful variegated thread. It totally pops out on this quilt. And I love the way the color migrates. Now on this one here, this quilt, um, I've used a Christmas variegated. So it goes from white, red to green. And I've used it to add the quilt as you go pieces together and also in the stippling of this braid here so i've used it two different ways in two different um types of stitching this is free motion and this is just with the decorative stitch on my machine now this one this is a star you may recognize the star um, from the v-neck block that i did but i finished this and i've added and this is that wonderful orophil i did a zigzag to go around the star isn't that beautiful and i love you can see the migration of the colors on there and it's just gorgeous so i love that too now this is embroidery and look i used beautiful browns um, in the stitching area here also i want you to take note of the eyes of this owl this is also with a variegated thread, and look how it's stitched out. And it really makes those eyes come to life. Love that. And then this is also from um, the last thing, but you will see that I used the Orophil Yellow on here in free motion. This was edge to edge. And you'll see how the colors migrate and how that variegated thread gets lost in the yellow areas, but it kind of shows up in the white areas. And I love that, and it's one of the things that I love to use variegated threads on is stippling, free motion, and doing the background area of a quilt. So hopefully I have um, added a little bit of excitement and possibilities for you for variegated threads. I wanted to show you real quickly some of these threads. Now let me pull off these six Orofil threads. I've made this sample showing the different threads and the migrations of these six threads through just a basic piece of sewn fabric. I did a little zigzag and I also did a decorative stitch, which is, you know, you can do straight line stitching too to show that migration, but I always kind of gauge the threads um, as far as the migration based on more of a decorative stitch, either a zigzag, um, and that way you can see how it's going to migrate, especially if you're doing a satin stitch. So, Orofil, this is the black. Look at the sheen on that. It's not just black. It's not a flat color. We've got the gray, the neutrals. We have this wonderful, whoops, <laughs> um, rainbow bright colors. We have the yellow that I used on several of the samples. We have this pink, oh my gosh, baby quilts. I can't. It would just be wonderful for a little girl. And then we also have the blues, also for little boys, but think about it, ocean, sky, so much you can do with blues. So I love these Oroville threads. I know you will too. And don't forget that you can click on the link in the description or go to moors-so.com where you can pick up this box set of Oroville threads today. So, I hope I have inspired you to try some variegated threads, and if you have used variegated threads before, I hope you dive into these wonderful Orofil variegated thread box that we have here called Kaleidoscope. By the way, each one of these spools has 1,422 yards of thread on them, and if you multiply that by the full box, you're getting 8,000 532 yards of thread. Imagine the things that you can do with that thread. I hope you've enjoyed this week. I've sure hoped um, that I see you next week here on More Sewing with Michelle. And until then, bye-bye!